Okay, um, today's video is pretty simple, um, but it might be kind of long because we are, I, I'm, I'm going to start from the very beginning, make the bow, and then I'm actually going to rhinestone it. Um, the reason for uh, making this video is because I've had several, I guess, um, questions and requests about rhinestoning, and I know I briefly touched on um, how to rhinestone hair bows, but I guess I've never done one video just simply dedicated to um, uh, bow rhinestoning, I guess, and all of a sudden that's, um, I guess, a big thing. So we are going to do that today um, with a large boutique bow. Not the mega size, but, you know, a large one, like a six inch or so. Um, so let's see, we'll get right to the supplies. Um, this is a two and a fourth inch black grow grain ribbon and I chose black so that um, hopefully you can see the rhinestones a little better whenever I'm doing that. It's just such detailed work that's hard to see. Okay, this is cut to 46 inches. All right, so you want to make sure that uh, you cut it to about that length. Um, and okay oops let me give my doggie a treat here so she'll go away there you go we have extra dogs from the flood so we're still dealing with that okay um, so the ribbon and then um, your salon clip if you use that scissors um, hot glue gun uh, you need your your French um, barrette I think that um, I use an alligator oops alligator clip to um, help me in the process but I think that to use this on a big bow isn't the best idea you know sometimes they're kind of heavy and anyway it's your choice but um, I usually use the barrettes um, lighter you know to heat seal or if you're using the wood burning tool um, you know whatever the option is and then of course I don't know I've said needle and thread um, the rhinestoning supplies okay um, I use this um, it's to pick up the rhinestones it's a rhinestoning pencil and I get it from uh, a website called rockinresin.com and I will leave the link for that I've mentioned this before and I've used this in other videos it's awesome real awesome little tool to be able to pick up those tiny rhinestones Okay, another um, thing you want to pick up if you're going to rhinestone, hot glue is not really a great idea. It's real bumpy and it doesn't hold real well. So I use the Eileen's Jewel It and this, you know, specifically um, is made for that kind of thing, embellishments on clothing and ribbon and whatnot. Uh, $2.99 for a two ounce um, bottle of glue. Hobby Lobby. Not sure if Walmart sells it, but probably. They sell the Eileen's products. Okay, and then the rhinestones. Um, this pack came from Walmart. It's a five millimeter um, size. Let's see, I believe $2.99 for this. It's 145 jewels. Uh, they're you know they're they're relatively small, but you don't want great big ones. It kind of looks gaudy. I mean, unless you know you're really trying to make a statement. But um, this is a good size um, rhinestone for for uh, for for the bows. Okay, and I think I've mentioned everything, so we'll just go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to use the little stand to help me out. Um, okay, now. Before um, I make my bows, I cut the ribbon to size, and then I stiffen it. It's so much easier to make uh, the bow when the ribbon is stiff, okay? So you want to use some hairspray or whatever you use to stiffen. Um, I like the hairspray because it dries real quick, and it, you know, it, it stiffens a little bit better, I think. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, I just you know put it in front of the fan or you can actually even um, put it in the microwave although you can't stretch it out in the microwave you know for like 30 seconds um, a hair dryer whatever it really doesn't take that long to dry okay um, let's see I've already didn't realize it anyway I've already cut 
the first ain't you know the first little angle here and then you just you know heat seal it okay now you want to take and make your first loop and I don't really stick my um, you know this tail up too far okay so and again you want just a slight angle almost straight up and down if that makes sense okay all right and then you just bring this other one across like that all right and then at this point I just use my alligator clip just as sort of an extra pair of hands if that makes sense okay <clears throat> Alright, and then you want to take this and just tuck it in behind here, parallel, okay, and that's what it looks like, and then just kind of flip that one over and angle it up, okay, and that's about what it should look like, and then, alright, that may look perfect or whatever or it looks like you know it's supposed to but just in case I clip it with my salon clip take the alligator clip off and then um, I see that it is not perfectly aligned you know one is shorter than the other so I adjust it and that's um, really the trick to a perfectly symmetrical bow is to make sure your loops are the same size on the top and then on the bottom if that makes sense okay so after a little bit of adjusting and you're satisfied with the way it looks okay then you want to crease it in the middle and this is kind of a, a new thing that I've done <clears throat> I uh, you know I always stick my needle in the back and the center and then I pull it all the way through until that knot catches it. Okay, now you can, like I've done in the past, go through the top, go through the bottom and string it around and then pull it real tight um, to crease it. If that method works for you, that's, you know, that's great. I do that sometimes. Uh, and then I, I hand crease also. And what I do is I, you know, make sure I hold it in the middle real well. I take my clip off and I just kind of let this hang. And then I crease it. I push, you know, my thumbnail. Let's see if I can get in there and push this down. So I've got one little mountain. All right, then I go down a little bit more and push like this. All right, then I've got this flap right here left. And I just simply push it down. Okay and I grab it with my left hand very carefully like this and then I've got this left in the middle okay well then I can simply just start wrapping and you kind of have to wiggle it underneath your fingers okay and then that way if the ribbons kind of thick you don't have to you know your your um, your your thread rather is already through and you don't have to worry about it okay so You've got the three fold crease and then you just tie it off in the back. <clears throat> and my needle is a little dull. I think it doesn't want to go through. Okay. And I just kind of do one knot. All right, but I do not cut it off yet. Okay. All right, and that's what I have so far. Nice big southern bow. Let's see, this one is about six inches. Okay. Now, when I did forget one other supply, uh, you'll need um, the seven eighths ribbon for the middle. So, um, sorry about that. Okay, so I leave this on. Remember, I always do this. I get my French barrette. 
and I put that in and sometimes you know if you have this flap back here from the first tail you can kind of put a dot of glue on the back of it and tack it down or whatever that's what I've been doing oops all right so you just put a little line of glue on the back or if you prefer to put it on the barrette that works okay so then you just push it in and this has always worked really well for me um, because that barrette stays on metal and hot glue really you know don't jive too too well so the thread enforcement you just wrap it around the middle and then tie it off that works real well and that's it you've got your barrette in and you clip that thread off okay now you don't want to put your tension bar back in yet because we are going to make our knot first okay now from the other videos <clears throat> I double up okay I do about 8 inches so that would be 16 inches all together and I fold it in half and I know it seems like a lot of ribbon but it makes such a difference um, because the knot is not flimsy and it's it's just I don't know I just find it to be so much better okay so I'm gonna cut that in half all right, and then to make your knot, you do sort of like an awareness symbol, and then you pull this one down, go around, go under, and through the middle, pull it up a little ways, and then just flip it like that. <clears throat> okay, and if you want to put a little bit of glue in that center. And stick that knot on there to hold it okay and then you feed the excess around to the back and then you clip it off and then I glue the two pieces together just a little bit is all you need just to kind of keep it together you know you just glue the two flaps together because you have double ribbon okay and you can heat seal you know the one that's on top if you feel like you need to but it's been glued so you know likely it's not gonna fray all right and then you just glue those two flaps down all right and that's what you got in the back and then um, you just put your tension bar back in, put it in the front, set it right there on the little lip, whatever you want to call it, um, and then flip it over. You don't even have to bend it. Okay. Now, last step here, of course, is to um, do your tail. And I just cut mine at an angle. And that is if you make your bow with a tail. I kind of like the tails. Of course, if you use the figure eight method, you don't have a tail. But um, a lot of times the tail can, you know, can be monogrammed or whatever. I put, I use a lot of uh, things on the tail. All right, so I'm gonna clip my bow right there. And now comes the point of the tutorial. Okay, and we're going to get our rhinestone pencil. I'm going to kind of put some of this other stuff up. Okay, I'm going to get my little, I'm going to use my lid here. And I actually have a few left over in this bag that I'm going to use. I'm going to just pour a few out here more than a few I guess okay 
Um, <clears throat> when you rhinestone, you want to figure out a pattern. Okay? I mean, unless, you know, you just want to put dots everywhere. What I do is I start with one loop, then I put the rhinestones, and I'll do another loop, and so on. Okay? So, um, and you can put as, as many or as little as you want. Um, but you want to put, you know, as small of a dot as possible. You don't need much because you don't really want it oozing out of the side a whole lot. Okay, so I'm going to do one and then one, two, and then one and one, two, if that makes sense. You know, there's really no exact measurement. You know, you just kind of wing it, if that makes sense. Okay, and you know, you like I said, you just put as few or as many as you want. Okay, now, there are my dots. <clears throat> and then I get my my pencil and it automatically picks up the rhinestone if you can see that okay and then I plop it on the glue and there you go see there's the first one and then you just continue uh, in that pattern you pick up one and you put it on the glue it's very simple if you have the right tools, so to speak, it'll work. And it goes very, very quickly. This little tool is very inexpensive and it works wonderful. See, it just picks up those little rhinestones. And there you go. Okay. And I guess I could put a couple down here. Alright, see I'm going to put a couple down here. Okay, so that's one loop. And I'm going to quickly try to get these other ones done. Let me show you the end result. It really doesn't take a long time. And um, while I'm doing this, I'll just kind of tell you, um, upcoming in the next, I hope, next week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, oop, that one came off. I, um, I'm planning a Thanksgiving bow of some type. Um, I thought about doing just a, like a over-the-top, you know, spiked bow since those are so popular. I can do that. Um, you know, for the Halloween one, I did the, the loopy bow. So, um, I think that might be the next one, and, and that will be the giveaway bow. So, um, I'm going to try to get that one up next time. And I apologize about taking so long on this, this kind of stuff, but it kind of gives you an idea of how long, you know, it takes to rhinestone. See, it's... How it looks so far very pretty um, yeah this is the kind of thing that you know shows up from far away and we went to a football game one time where a little girl had a rhinestone bow like this and um, I mean you could see that bow from way down you know at the bottom so anyway that's what it looks like so far rhinestones. Okay. 
hate it when they fall upside down. All right, so that's the top, and they, they stay pretty well after you put them on. Okay, and just real quick, on the bottom. And like I said, you can do any kind of pattern you want, but I would suggest some type of pattern. You know, it just looks a little more professional or organized that way, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'll just finish these up because I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. And I'll post uh, the final result picture on Facebook. There are so many little tutorials I want to get to. I just haven't had time. And you know, I post all those little bows on Facebook. And a lot of times I'll get questions about tutorials on them. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. There's the one side. Um, you know, I didn't go crazy. I think it looks too gaudy if you put too many of them. Okay, and you can even put some on the, the knot here. But anyway, that's the idea. That's how you rhinestone hair bows. Um, and I'm not sure if this is washable. Um... Yeah, it says to, uh, if you're going to do like, you know, wearable things, it's, uh, it says 7 to 10 days before washing, and I don't think you can dry it. So anyway, there you go for anyone who um, wants to know how to rhinestone hair bows. That's how you do it. Very easy if you have the right stuff. Uh, so thanks for watching, and the next one will be a giveaway bow, and you guys have a great weekend. Thanks.